This is the Voice of America, Washington, D.C., signing on. All they have is just... The station with the... <laughs> best, me, best, me, best. In your face, all over the place. What's up, what's up, y'all? It's that dude trip back with another episode of the Subverted Radio Show. This is episode number two, of season two. Welcome back, everybody. Y'all, what you just heard, that was the song Haunt Me by Interlux from right here in Houston, Texas. Y'all, we got a great show. We actually are going to try to answer as many music questions as possible later on the episode. Stay tuned for that. We would love to hear your opinions, and we're going to go ahead and jump right back into the music. This is Bury You by Slow Pulse. Bad for- Blood, your time is up, you, your pain Welcome to your death Welcome to your death This is the news Shocking, I'm sinking in But the cause, scratching at your skin Your time is up, you take the death Welcome your left foot, you consecrated Fulfilled by your own demons Your time is up, now laid to rest Welcome your left 
All right, all right, all right, y'all. Welcome back to the Subverted Radio Show. Again, the song you just heard was Bury You by Austin Local Slow Pulse. We're going to take the time to go over a couple upcoming shows here in Houston. February 5th at Scott Bar, we have Emo Night. February 8th, again at Scott Bar, is going to be 94.5 The Buzz presents the Texas Buzz, featuring bands such as Sasser, April Company, and Phil Go Dream. And then on February 11th, again at Scott Bar, will be Of Sulfur and Mental Cruelty. And then after that, March 8th, at the pub 529 will be Gulf Coast Death Fest 3. And then after that, April 27th at Acadia Barn Grill will be Texas Manifest 3 featuring See You Next Tuesday and Thumbscrew and many more after that. Y'all, we're going to go ahead and get right into the next song here. We want to give a very, very big shout out to this band. This band is actually all the way over in Finland. Give them some love. This song is called Void by Nano. is my burden this is my pain written in my own man let it be and forsake me this is my life this is my faith no daylight touches this this void in me. I see the soul in 
Hey, welcome back everybody again. That was Void by the Finnish band Nano. Now we're going to get into the rant or talking portion of the show right now. Uh, y'all, there's actually an idea that came across that we're going to go ahead and try to answer as many questions about music as we possibly can. All right. Because of course, like every single time, maybe you turn on like a podcast or a radio show like this or whatever it may be, there's always going to be a lot of different questions like, oh yeah, like what do you think of this person? What do you think of that person? But it never really goes far beyond that. Of course, they can talk about it forever, but I think at this point it's more how many music questions can we answer in like maybe five, ten minutes, all right? So went ahead, just did the straight Google thing, put in music conversation questions, music opinion questions, and we came across one here that looks like it has like, I want to say like, geez, over like a hundred or so. Now, Obviously, there was a lot of questions that I kind of wanted to avoid, and not because I didn't want to talk about them, but it was more or less like, okay, we've already heard it before. Like, yeah, what's your favorite band, or what's your favorite singer, what's this, what's that? And it's like, okay, we can go over those things all day. But I try to find myself, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more kind of questions that make you think a little more, I guess you could say. All right, not, you know, not just the same typical ones. Try to find something a little bit beyond what we're, what we're used to here. So right now, we're going to go ahead and go through these questions here. Try to be as quick as possible, all right? Even though, ironically, right now, I'm kind of fuzzing through. <laughs> Even though right now, I'm kind of sitting there going, uh, eh. oh, well. But we're going to try to get through these as quick as humanly possible, all right? We're going to try to set a small little record here. All right, so here we go. As many music conversation or opinion questions as possible in a small amount of time. All right, here we go. What is the first song you remember loving as a child? All right, honestly, as a child, ironically, I was very big into Red Hot Chili Peppers, and this is going to sound very weird, but one of the songs I remember being in love as a child, I'm talking like 90, like 98, 99, was actually Californication by Red Hot Chili Peppers. It was always funny because my brother would always look at me and be like, hey, do you really know what that song is about? And I'd be like, no, but it's fun. I like it. Eh." And he'd be like, all right, cool, whatever. Number two, who is your all-time favorite musician and why? Jeff Buckley, hands down, favorite singer, favorite songwriter. All right, the guy could take straight up like the worst song on the planet and still turn it into something I could probably cry over. Number three, have you ever learned to play a musical instrument before? If so, which ones? Yeah, played bass in you know high school jazz band. Before that, obviously, I played a lot of guitar. I actually ended up learning how to play drums. I do actually know piano pretty well, and I think that's about as far as I could really get. Number four, do you have a go-to karaoke song? Honestly, y'all, I know it sounds weird, but for me, it's actually Rooster by Alice in Chains. Because I remember at one point, it was P.E., after a talent show one day, the P.E. teacher the next day came up and said, like, hey, I'll go ahead and give everyone a free day, give them just, you know, basketballs to play with, we don't have to do anything, if you just sing a song, because she saw me at the talent show, and I was very bitter about it, I'm like, oh, come on, I don't want to do it in front of here, like, I'm not in the mood, like, blah, 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 and finally she said, all right, fine, guess we got to do this, and then for some reason... I was wearing a t-shirt that said Alice in Chains, you know, and at the bottom it said Rooster, you know, and I was, you know, I was a band kid, so of course, like, you know, I had a bunch of band t-shirts even when I was, you know, 11, 12 years old, and so I ended up singing basically the first two verses and the first chorus, and after that, it turns out afterwards, she was a big fan of that song and the band, and she was like, wow, you actually hit every note, so honestly, every single time someone says karaoke, that one's the first thing that comes to mind. Number five, what's a song you like that's from a completely different culture. Oh man, I'm not gonna lie, like this one is really good. Number one, I actually love the Slumdog Millionaire soundtrack. Like I love A.R. Rotman, all right, I love Jai Ho, I love songs like that, but I love those. And I'm not gonna lie, like I actually really love reggaeton. Like Bad Bunny is awesome. I don't care what Eno said, Bad Bunny kills it. All right, James Belvin or Balvin or whatever his name is. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. All right, like I actually really, really, really do like reggaeton, right? I hope that stuff gets even bigger than it is. Number six, what's a genre of music that people might be surprised you enjoy? All right, ironically, it's never it's never something typical like, you know, oh, like I actually like country or I like old 90s rap. Like that's something that like, you know, a lot of people can be into. But there's one very particular genre <laughs> that I've always somehow enjoyed. And it's very particular, all right? It's Finnish EDM. Because of course there's like European EDM, like Britain pop and, you know, American DJs and dubstep and all kinds of trance music and techno, whatever it may be. But honestly, like any time I hear any kind of electronic music coming out of Finland, I'm like, I gotta play it right now, no matter what I'm doing. 
All right, let's see. Number seven. How do you usually discover new music? Number one, just looking for it. I mean, it's kind of funny. I'm talking about finding new music on, you know, a podcast radio show that does nothing but try to find like unsigned and like unknown artists. First step to that is always just looking for it. You know, if you just keep listening to the same stuff, you know, you're going to get a little stagnant. So one day you just got to be the cool. What else is out there? What's, you know, next on the playlist here? Number eight. What song can always make you dance no matter where you are or how you're feeling? Okay, I'm not going to lie. Again, that kind of goes back to how much I actually really like EDM. But for some reason, every single time a song called... It's a song called Time for a Dance. I'm actually not really sure who it's from. All right. It's actually one of those kind of like... It's a remix that's been through like 15 different DJs and producers and so on. But for some reason... Every time I just hear the hook where it's like, you know, like, it's time for dance, like, just that opening line for some reason, like, even if I'm just in the middle of, you know, doing taxes or even in the car, all of a sudden I just start moving. I don't know why. It's just like, that's the song. Let's see here. Number nine. Can you think of a song that perfectly encapsulates a specific period of your life? Okay, I'm not going to lie. There was one CD that I am talking, I burnt through so fast all right it was actually true uh, trivium with their album ascension and for some reason every single time i put it on pull harder in the strings Yamada, just because just that opening drum feel that opening drum intro is just the most killer hook and then like every single part of that entire song and for some reason i only remember it just through eighth grade because for some reason during eighth grade i was only listening to that album and made like two others but for some reason like that whole song just define me for eighth grade like the whole year all right number 10 if your life was a movie what song would play during the opening credits oh i've actually known this one for a while but i know i'm gonna sound cheap but i would so let the star wars opening crawl music play even though probably the movie wouldn't be as like you know dramatic and space operatic and so on as the actual movie itself no matter how boring a movie about my life may be, like I would have to sit there and say, like, nah, that needs to be the opening because it's just too good. All right, number 11. Which song lyrics have impacted you the most? I'm not going to lie. Y'all have probably heard me talk about this a couple times, maybe in season one. But there's a new group out. I'm actually, I am think it's actually more of a person. But they're called uh, Days to Waste. And I'm not going to lie, like, I love their music. They, like, they're my most listened to artists of the past, like, two years. All right. Like, it's like every so now and then it'll be like, you know, three, four months later. And I'm just really cool. Let's see if they picked up, put out anything new. And all of a sudden it'll be like a new song and I'm automatically hooked no matter what. But every single time that I get into it, I'm like, okay, man, these are great songs. But then once I start really listening to it, I'm like, wow, these lyrics especially are just phenomenal because i still remember the first time i heard uh love sick by days to waste i know at one point there's this one particular section at the end where he says and you said that i'm your everything and the saddest part is i believed it because at first it's almost like you're feeling like oh wow he's making a love song like oh yeah like you're everything you're this or that and then it just right away flips in like half a second flat where he's just like oh yeah and i actually believed that to be true it's like oh wow this this went from being very, very heartwarming to just heartbreaking and like less than a heartbeat. It was probably my favorite thing. And that's probably why that song was my most listened to song in 2022. So, but every single time I listen, there's always like great lyrics in all of the songs. All right, what's up next? We got number 12. If you could see any musician, band, living or dead in concert, who would it be? Oh, God. No, no. This I, Man, I, I said this was supposed to be a fast lightning round kind of thing, but th this one is way too much because number one, the, I mean, I'll say the first one that comes to mind is Elvis because that's just too much of an opportunity not to pass up. But it's basically him or Freddie Mercury, basically like original queen. Like that would definitely be the two that's like right off the top of my head. 13, what is the most emotional music concert or performance you've ever attended? All right, I actually have two. The first one was I saw Slipknot, and I think their first tour right after Paul died. And that one was just purely emotional because at that point, they didn't even have a bass player, right? At that point, they did the whole tour with just, you know, one of his basses uh, on a stand the entire concert. Like, they didn't even play with the bass player. And I got to say, ironically, the second one 
is actually, uh, I went to San Antonio, went to the White Rabbit and saw A Part of Burning Body at the end of their Red, White, and Green tour. And they played Texas Blood Money in San Antonio and the White Rabbit during some kind of, uh, I want to say like end of the year festival. And for some reason, I remember right near the last game chant towards the end of the song, uh, for some reason, that whole part, it was just this me and this one dude in the back of the show, just like holding each other and screaming the lyrics together. And like, you know, we had never met each other before. And we were just like getting in our feelings during this part. Like, even though it was a heavier song, you know, we were sitting there just shouting out the whole thing. And then after that, we just, you know, I've never seen the guy again. So, you know, honestly, that was pretty emotional. Every single time I think back to emotional concerts, that's the first one that comes to mind. What's, uh, we got 14. Is there a song you could listen to on repeat and never get tired of? Like I said, probably anything these days would be definitely anything from like Days to Waste or obviously from my favorite artist like Jeff Buckley. You know, like I could, I could literally put on the entire album of Grace and just like have that thing go never skip a song just keep it on it's one of those that's one of those albums to where like you know if i was trapped on an island and i could only have a boom box and like three cds that would be probably the only cd i would even ask for just because like i would never get tired of it at all and i never have and i still have like four copies of them because i just every single time i buy a new copy i'll just play it so much and put them here put them there and i keep destroying it so i'm like well i gotta get a new one all right What's the next? We got 15. What song do you think tells an incredible story? Honestly, like, I'm not going to lie. I really haven't heard that much to actually tell that much of a story these days. Of course, a lot of artists still put in, like, a lot of effort into their lyrics and so on and so forth, which is awesome, which is great. But I'm not going to lie. I think a lot of the songs from, like, the 70s had, like, really good, like, storytelling. This one may be a little bit cheesy again, but honestly, I think American Pie may be probably my favorite, like, story one maybe that or hotel california for some reason because it's like you're sitting there actually wondering like oh what's going to happen next what's going to come next even though you've probably heard it a thousand times you're still sitting there with this awkward feeling of like ooh, like what is going to happen next what's coming next it's like even though you know like you still feel a little bit like uneasy what do you think about the use of auto-tune music i am all for it i do not care all right, I could care less if someone used autotune in any song. I don't care if it's like, you know, hard stuff here, country music there, obviously in pop, I do not care. I think it's something cool, like, you know, if people want to use it, all, you know, I'm all for it. I could care less if people use autotune, all right? More power to you if you do it. 17, we have, have you ever created your own piece of music or written a song? Yeah, I was in a band at one point, you know, I played the bass parts, came up with those. I don't think I ever actually wrote any, wrote any lyrics or anything like that. But, you know, I got to be in a band. I got to make music. I got to do all that fun stuff. So, you know. 18. Do you think it's possible to objectively judge a song or is all music criticism subjective? All music criticism is completely subjective. <laughs> I mean, like, it's like... That's why you have bands who are more popular than others. Like, you know, more people are going to be into this over here than this over here. Like, that's, that's it. Like, yeah, of course you have like a lot of music critics, you know, who get paid to share their opinions, write about it, put a lot of people on YouTube. We do the same damn thing, which is all perfectly fine, but it still comes down to like, cool. Like if I'm listening to a song and then somebody's in the car next to me and they don't like it, guess what? That means, like, they don't like it. It's not one of those, like, oh, we must judge it on, like, this piece and this piece. It's like, I mean, you can, obviously, but music is literally just something that anybody can either love or not. So it's that simple. 19, what song would you play to an alien to best represent humanity? Oh, God. Mm. I'm not gonna lie, okay? That's actually a really, really difficult question because at that point, it's like, on one hand, I really want to show them, like, a song that represents like humanity and love and you know the very very good side but then again on the other side it's like you know what if you know, i play them like a dance song and that makes them feel good you know i think of that one i'll just be funny like if i'm gonna do that to represent humanity i would just do like the rick and morty thing and start doing the swifty song just to you know save the planet like they did so i'll just keep it there <laughs> And number 20, what song has the best intro or opening line in your opinion? Okay, two come to mind right off the top of my head is number one is First World Problems by Strafing the Path. Like when you literally just start the song by saying for every rich white kid that has something to say, shut the fuck up and then just blast in the song. Like you almost can't get better than that. But I am also going to go back a little bit and say that on Kublai Khan from Texas, 
on Kubla Khan's first like EP that they did, there's a song called Icon on it. And it just starts off with Matt saying, let me be the first to say you're nothing more than a pretty face. And then it just goes again and goes straight into the song. So like, those are the two that always come up. All right, like, you know, every rich white kid's got something to say, shut the fuck up. Or let me be the first to say you're nothing more than a motherfucking pretty face. You know, you can't start off songs like, like you know, better than that. That's, that's people just being angry and just going straight down into a drop that starts a song. You know, that sounds, those sound like things that could be more like something said before a breakdown in the middle of a song, not just something that's like, I got a great idea. Let me just say this or scream this. And then it just drops right into the beginning of the song. Like, it's too perfect for that. And we're going to just take one more, just make it an odd number, just to make everyone mad. 21. Can music exist without emotion? Not at all. Period. Even people who make, like, some of the dumbest pop songs that everyone hates and, and, and no one likes and blah, blah, blah. People still, like, sit there and think, like, cool, like, there's emotion with, like, dancing. There's emotion in crying. There's emotion in anger. There's emotion in being depressed there's emotion in whatever it may be all right even terrible songs like people still sat there and felt something when they either made it and maybe there's still like you know if there's one person out of the whole world that feels a certain way after they hear a song then yeah of course it does so yeah music actually cannot even be considered music without emotion at all so y'all we're gonna go ahead and get into the next song all right our next song will be our last for this episode all right we hope you really enjoyed this one y'all if you want Go ahead and listen to all the questions that we have previously asked during this particular talking point and go ahead and comment back to us, all right? Like, if you want, go ahead and think about it. Like, you know, what are your answers to these questions, all right? How you feel about it? Am I completely wrong? You know, should auto-tune, like, not even be a thing, all right? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Whatever it is, like, definitely let us know. Comment underneath, all right? If you're watching this or hearing it on YouTube, all right, definitely comment underneath. We definitely want to hear everyone's answers. But... Yo, we're going to go ahead and get into our last song here. Our last song this night is No Room for Remorse by Orphic Illusion.